say welcome, welcome. Welcome to the 27 episodes of GVTV, Good Vibes T Television. And we are live. Um, I am one of the trifecta, um, one of your hosts tonight, DJ PRS One. Uh, and with me is the beautiful Miss Savanya Savvy E. Unfortunately, Mona isn't here tonight, so um, he still hasn't. He still hasn't fully recovered from the vid. Um, so he's getting some rest. Uh, shout out to you, bro. I know you're probably watching us um, tonight. We got a special guest with us. Uh, we got Miss Tiara J. The fill in, the backup to the backup, as I always call her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we got Miss Jace Nicole, former movie actress, now full time mom <laughs> and wife. <It's> the um, <laughs> and we welcome her to the discussion today. Our topic tonight is drum roll. Our topic tonight is parenting teenage kids in this new climate, um, you know, with sex, drugs, violence especially the violence right now that's going on, you know. Um, and, Savvy, you got anything to add? Moving forward? No, I'm good. All right, all right. How about you, Tara? How, how y'all weeks been so far? The week's been good. It's only Tuesday, so it's fine. It's yep. been all right so GBTV far. GBTV Tuesday. <laughs> Jace, how about your week? Um, You know, it's a regular week. Just um, got a lot of... Uh, Work is busy, uh, which is a blessing because right, you know, right. a lot of people that are affected by this. So that's always a blessing. All so right. Just so, you know, regular everyday stuff. Well, go ahead. Since you're already talking, um, introduce yourself and, you know, it, you know what's going on with you and, and what you've been doing and some of your past accolades and stuff like that. And, and you know. Okay. Um, well, my uh, name is Jace Nicole. A lot of people uh, know me by that name. I am a former actress. My last most recent project was a project called 2050, um, directed by Prince Hall. It's on Amazon Prime. So if you have Prime, it's free. Um, just look for uh, Stephanie Bloom's beautiful face with the red wig on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've, uh, right now, like I'm going to school for a uh, BA healthcare management. And then full-time, you know, mother, uh, my daughter is 21. So she just moved out. And then Nick is 10, so I basically have him, but you know, he's in virtual schooling. So we got a little bit of help with him for school. So I'm able to go to work and my husband. And um, at past accolades, uh, 2050, uh, Commuter Chronicles, which is a, you, you can type it on YouTube. I think the web series is still up. I had a small stint on a um, show that I was working with a former friend named The Jace Perspective. That's the funk. Uh, I mean, not that too heavy, just if you type in, it's been so long since I've been doing it and I'm getting old now, so I can't remember everything. <laughs> so if you just like type in Jace Nicole, it'll show you my past things and you know, that's it. So. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, welcome, welcome. Do you, you have an um, a IMB page? Do you still have an IMDb uh, page? I'm on IMDb, but it's like, if you just type in Jace Nicole on IMDb, it'll pop up. Oh, okay. Stuff that I've done. Yeah, so like I said, okay. I'm not on anything now, so it's not like, you know, I'm working on anything big and you know, so it's just former stuff oh you know so so, mm -hmm. so um, did you did you give it up or, or or did you um just you know um put it on pause i mean what, what what's what what made you decide to go the other the other route or hit the brakes okay <laughs> that is a great question um i'm basically i think that's it um there was a time when acting was like my first love outside of my kids right and then right. just I won't go into detail because there's so many little things and I don't want to seem like I'm griping or trying to talk bad, but it's just like a lot of things, I lost the passion for it. I saw a lot of things I didn't like. I like I saw a lot of um, directions the industry was going to go. Um, also too, in this, and I'm kind of glad I kind of let it go because in this current day and age, it's so shaky right now. So that's not really something I can fall back on and carry my family financially. So it was more, you know, I guess now it would be more like fun, but it's just like I saw a lot of things that I didn't like. So I was like, eh, it's no longer for me. I'm just going to let the next generation kind of carry it on. And, you know, so I'll just stand by and watch and, you know, cheer all the actors now that's coming up and up and coming. And my friends that are still working, I, you know, watch their, you know, their projects, things like that. But I just lost the passion for it. And it just was no longer in me. So a lot of things. So that was so it. How long so have you, um, 
how long have you haven't been acting like since you took your break? Going on a year and a half now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> just thinking that uh, hearing your story it's just like you know we thought of Natalie DeSalle and her passing so it's just like I know the the film world right now is definitely devastated and at a loss because they really lost a great actress she was so for me coming up she was a breath of fresh air to see on screen and you know, and I hate to say it like this but you know um uh, a normal size girl that was my complexion. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I loved her in everything right. she did. So, right. Yeah. Now, truth be told, yeah. I mean, Jace is like on pause now, but if she gets that one phone call from Kurt Sutter, I know she'll be up <laughs> ready. <laughs> If you don't know Kurt Sutter, he's the writer of Man, something. Oh Honor my God. Things. I don't even I don't even think he's doing anything anymore. No, he hasn't. Know. Not since anything. Sons. Not since Sons. Oh, no, he is. Actually, he is. He's doing um the Mayans, the the the, the other side of Sons of Anarchy. The Mexican I was um, trying and that lost me. It did. I it, was watching so, I was watching the Mayans and it's like mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's where he yeah. went with that one. Um uh, Chera. Yeah. So let's you gonna hit you gonna hit us on on the on the Chera brand? Oh yeah. So hey guys, it's me. Yeah, I'm back again. Um well, she's like, I'm one of the people, so I, I don't have to do nothing, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Y'all know me. Hey y'all. And we gotta push it right, yeah. Uh, yeah, y'all know who I am. Um that's trjbrand.com backslash shop. You know I have everything that you need. Of course, we have our drip mask, ladies. The you drip mask. You know okay. my diamond, my diamond drip mask. You don't have an open one that you had last week? Yeah, yeah I want to see it. Oh, I have to get off of camera to get it. No problem, no problem. So I'll I'll, I'll get it. For, I'll get it for you guys. Um, <laughs> I have you know I have my t-shirts, my t-shirt line, um, with my queen quotes, um, my headbands. Um, we sell so much stuff now. Oh, and I came out today. I just launched a new um product. I have a um studded uh belt bag. It is so cute and it comes in black leather and white leather. So you guys, we are just hitting you guys um, product after product, accessory after accessory. So making sure you guys are up to date in all the latest fashion and being safe and cute at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so I saw your um, daughter on um, the show yesterday. That yes. was um, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did, you, how did she like it? She loved it. She absolutely loved being um, on camera. At first, you know, she was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to feel. So she was a little bit um, uncomfortable at first. But, you know, Benita and I talked to her and she was like, "Okay, I can do this. So when um, we started talking to her about things that she liked, she felt um, Mm -hmm. more relaxed and laid back. So we were like, "Okay, so you can do this. You know, this may be something that you want to do, pursue in the future so she had so much fun yesterday she Good. told her friends she'll be back next week oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it'll be her her. Her. yes it'll be her and a few other kids and, so. and it's oh, okay. amazing you say that because um so we're so used to the, the camera thing and, and and all this stuff right so we're, we're kind of uh, we, we you know we, we talk to the computer basically or the right. phone and um the, our, the first season of i'm um, not the first season the first episode you remember we had the show when i tell you each one of us had butterflies i swear we were stepping (laughs) over our words it was so nervous to be in front of a live audience it was crazy it was like there's no a show for your first episode well no remember you you were you introduced us remember you had had that show the the showcase i couldn't i couldn't tell for you i couldn't tell I, look, we were nervous. I know. I try to get. I try to get savvy to talk. She. She kept like, like, no. Go ahead, say something. <laughs> because my thing is, I did look. I did too much. I ain't even had to talk no more than right, I. Right, right. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And, and and Ramon, I, I was scared to put him on the mic because he kept trying to want to conversate in into deep stuff. Right. He was trying to get the axe out there. Right, he's trying to talk about relationships, and I'm Yo, like, oh, this look. is not the time to be talking about relationships. Exactly, and talking about this stuff on the computer is fine, but when you talk about a live audience, I was man, we needed helmets or something because something's about to start <laughs> flying off of the top. <laughs> oh man, 
But well, you know, we had a good time, though. We had right, we did. So yeah. when you get a chance, you guys can check it out on YouTube. We got a, um the the first season, um the first episode of season two. It's called the um, Good Vibes TV Showcase. Check it out. Just head to our YouTube channel. And while I'm on that, make sure y'all hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell. Hit the like if you like. If you want, if you like, want to hear more stuff from us. Let's crush this um YouTube algorithm and get us going. Um, so parenting, parenting teens. This is the topic tonight. Parenting teens. Um, and when I say parenting teens, it, it's a different um generation now. It's a different time. There's a lot of violence. Um, and there's a lot of you know parents now just pulling their hair out, don't know what to do. They're scared to even let their teens out the house with all what's going on. And it's one of those things where, you know, um, even kids going to school, you got to drop them off to school. Sometimes it, it's, it, you get you worry when they take the bus. You worry when they try to get a Uber or something to go to school. It's scary. What you guys think about, you know, teens just, just right now, just raising a teenager in the household is crazy with sex, drugs, violence. And rock and roll. Don't rock and roll. Well, no, we ain't got rock and roll. Now, now it's rap music. <laughs> Hip hop. Mm hmm. Bye, I, yeah, have yeah, yeah. I have a 12 year old so she's not a teenager yet but i see a change in her mm -hmm. um i definitely see she's not a little girl anymore she's um she's kind of grown out of being my little girl <laughs> she's kind of grown out of being my little girl now i think it's off camera giving you some eyes right now yeah she can't i heard the door i'm sad you, come on you want to come you did a good job yesterday. Come on. Say hi. Come say hi. Hi. Oh, hey. 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 Nice meeting you. You too. <laughs> it's like I I see a change in her. It's not always mommy, 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 mommy no more. It's always her in her room, um, on her phone with her AirPods. Um, her AirPods and her iPad on FaceTime, group FaceTime with her friends. Right. Um, and she only needs me if she's hungry or wants to go to the store to pick up an outfit. Like, oh, wow. I am not needed anymore as much as <laughs> I once was. And I'm like, I don't like that because I can see if I had a lot of kids. Right. Uh oh, so you're going to do withdrawals, huh? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, what's going on, girl? You know, so I definitely see it in the things that we watch. Like I, I don't have a um a little a lock on the things that she watches because right. in my mind I'm like she's not gonna watch that stuff. Uh, but, um, she is watching that stuff, and I was looking on Google today on how to uh, parent control lock some stuff. Right, like you right. gotta catch up now, huh? Yeah, now right. I'm like. Oh well, it's it's real. It's real. She she yeah. is changing. She is walking right now. <laughs> I was used to them like God, please. Like, how am I going? I, yeah, I need to do this like tonight. Like, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Just pray for me, y'all. Just please, for real. I I didn't know it was happening so fast. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, before you know it, they be in diapers and then they be dating boys, and you be like, what? What what happened? You know, I remember when I was wiping a little spit off your your, your 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 chin and stuff. Now you're dating boys. Like, that's crazy. It's very, especially when you have females, you know, when you have girls and they want, they be interested in boys. It's be like, you be like, no, boys are yucky. Like, always have that mentality. They are yucky. Yeah, don't wipe nothing off their chin now. You don't know much no. to be. Don't touch me. <laughs> no, in, in my 30s, boys are yucky still. <laughs> <laughs> They yucky, they suck. Oh, they suck. Definitely. And, and and talking about boys, like from my side of it, I have I'm surrounded by a lot of boys, the teen boys and all that stuff. Um, the guys that sang for the show, um, Half Island, they're in my house. Um, I had to post on Instagram. My house has never been filled with so much music. I mean, these guys, they they come over. They're not like the regular. I'm, and I'm glad they're growing the way they are. They're focused on their music and they come in and they hang out. They do all that stuff. So I'm I'm I want to. I don't want to shut them up. I want to make sure I, I, I support them and everything they do and keep them busy because once you, you know, these idle minds, once you get idle, you, you end up in, in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, um, but again, they, they, sometimes they say, well, Hey, we're going out and I'm worried. I swear. I try not to, I'm like, what am I worried about? They guys, I remember when I used to go out, it was fine. No, when I went out, it was different. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. right. When I in my time it was different. Um, but knees I worry about them when they go out, when they go and do their shows and stuff like that, and they're coming back. I don't want people to think, okay, they're they're a music group, so they 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 um they got money. They don't because they still live in upstairs in my house, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> they ain't got right. no kind of money, you know what I mean? They 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 still trying to get their feet wet, you know, they still saving up. Still scraping up little jobs on ends and you know here and there, but they even though they have music out, they got fan base and all that crazy stuff. They they broke. <laughs> yeah, it looks one way, but it's really another. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yes, and Jay, you just said you had a you just had a twenty one year old just leave the house. Um. Yeah, Jay just turned twenty one in August. Right. Um, and she just got her it, she just got her first apartment, and thankfully it's like literally five minutes up the street from me. Right. And then her boyfriend is five minutes up the street the other way. Okay. Um, so I have a very good relationship with him and his mother. Mm -hmm. He's great to her. Um, but I remember, you know, like she's 21 now. So of course her teenage years is it's a different past. generation than now. Right. So I have a up and coming teenager, Nick. He's 10. Right. right. Um, even though, so I've always been told you're too late. And I'm like, I don't think I'm too laid back. I, of course, I'm always concerned about both of my children, mm -hmm. but I feel like I talk, I talk to them all the time. I tell them all the time, you can come to mommy about anything. I will not judge you. I will not get upset. It could be about sex. It could be about drugs. It could be about your feelings. And I will listen because I don't want them going to their friends who don't know a damn thing, but will sound like, oh, because I remember being young and hearing my little girlfriends talk about sex. And now that I'm older, I think like, I think they was lying. Yeah, I don't exactly. think they really knew. You know what I'm saying? So and the only resource they have now is Pornhub. Right. And everything is free. Like now everything is so technologically based. They can right. access everything. Everything is so, like so open. Yep. Yes. Nicholas plays on Roblox. Right. And I actually come across a couple of pages where they had some graphic. And I was like, Nick, turn it off. And he's like, yep. okay. You know, he yep. doesn't yep. time. But so uh, circling back to what I was saying is I always talk to my kids. I'm always very open. I don't want to smother them because I know being a rebellious child myself, I always was the type where like, if you just was like, well, like when my mother and my father, it, my father was more the person of don't do this because I said so. So my mother was like, well, don't do this. And I would say, well, mom, why? Not because I was being disrespectful, but because I was curious and she would explain it to me. So I took her, I was more apt to listen to her than my dad. I was more like, he's like, don't do it because I said so. I would kind of dig my heels in the ground and rebel against him. Mm -hmm. But my mother being open with me and talking to me, I would then listen because I was like, oh, well, mom knows what she's talking about. Right, Let me slow right. my roll, pump my brakes. So even though I do have, you know, a parental fear and I want my children to be good out there, I have to also let them live life. I can't put them in the closet. I can't hide them from life. They have to experience things. And I want my children to be able to like self soothe themselves and figure out stuff on their own. I don't want to, you know what I mean? I don't want to yeah. run their life. And then, cause at one point they got to leave the house. Right. Jay's good. So like with, even with Nick, I just want to make sure like I still talk to him, but I still feel like he needs to go out and experience some things by himself. And if I can guard him from certain things, that's awesome but he does need to learn life experiences on his own as well and not be so guarded. Cause a lot of people as an adult, just people I work with, <laughs> you can tell that they're guarded and it's just like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> so it's like, you know, so, right. you know, yeah, it's definitely crazy out there, but I talk to my kids as much as possible, show them things and then just kind of let them go out into the world and, make their own mistakes and of course they can always come back and talk to me right. about stuff. So So you have um you have two boys? No, I have a, a son and a daughter. My my daughter Jalen is twenty one oh. and Nick is, oh. Nicholas is ten. Oh okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um like tell me what was your experience with your girl like growing up? You know, as so, um, <laughs> as a all right like, so like in terms of dating and, and, and getting interested in boys and, and, and Oh, definitely. Sexually so, active stuff and you know what I mean? <laughs> one thing I, one, so my mother passed away when I was four days before my 19th birthday. Oh, so wow. I didn't have, I didn't have the, I didn't have the motherly guidance. Right. So a lot of my 
raising Jay was by, you know, w- um, winging it, winging it, right. <laughs> okay. And um, her father used to always fuss at me like, oh, you treat her like to me. And with her, when my mother passing away, Jalen was that band-aid for that hole in my heart for the most part. So yeah, I, I always that. kept her close to me. And just as she would get older, like she never was boy crazy. And maybe because I also feel like once me and her father, me and her father broke up when she was very young, about two and a half, three. And I was single. I didn't let guys come to the house. <clears throat> if I went out. I made sure she was with her father or somebody in the family. If I couldn't find, I just wouldn't go. But I never had men around her. I never sh- had, I never watched inappropriate programming. Right. I always kept her, what's the word I'm looking yep. for? Sheltered. Sheltered. Not sheltered. I made sure that she watched age appropriate things. Everything was age appropriate. More like supervised. Right, supervised. And when she would ask me about boys, I would be honest with her. Um, I never used code words like (laughs) a penis is a penis, a vagina is a vagina. It wasn't like, oh, you know, your little cooter or oh, your little peewee. None of that. (laughs) You know, so I was always. It's open with her on an age appropriate level, but I made sure I always was open with her. And I always said, this is what can happen if you do this. Like for example, when she was younger, she had a, she was in middle school and I, and I, I never forget this. I would use movies a lot as examples. So mm-hmm. she came to me one day and she said, mom, there's a boy asking me to send him pictures of boobies. So I said, Jay, this is, you don't do that. I said, first of all, because if you send someone an explicit picture over the phone. Number one, they're going to show all their friends. I don't care what they tell you. Mm-hmm. They're going to show boys and they're going to show <laughs> girls alike. And there was a movie called, uh, do you remember the movie Six Sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay. The boy, his, his sister, Emily Osment, played in a movie called, oh, I can't remember, but basically it was a movie about a little girl in middle school and her best friend actually set her up to get bullied online and she almost like killed herself all kind of stuff so i would show jay i said if you do certain things this could very well happen so Mm -hmm. it's best for you not to do it now i told you i can't you know i'm not gonna hold your hand i expect you to be responsible but you know don't do these things because these things can happen Mm -hmm. and she would listen and then she would come to me and be like my oh so and so my school a whole bunch of boys is, is passing around a video of her sucking dick in the park and i was like see see i said that's what happens when you, you okay, do things no. yes <laughs> you know what i mean so it's just like i say just talk to your kids and be open don't be afraid to talk to them because it's better for it to come from you than one of their friends who think they know every damn thing and don't know nothing exactly and, so, you know what and, and i and i do agree with that like growing up my mother was like that like she didn't use no um cold word she was very you know very um especially yeah. about everything she said to us and sometimes yeah. she would you know show it we used to be like ma like really but she was like but this is what you're gonna do and this is how it really right. is mm-hmm. so you mm-hmm. know it's not a little tita wita it's not a little you're right you know, this is what it's yeah. this is how it is. So, yeah. none of that you know so my yeah. mother was like that so my children growing up i was you know like that talking to them straight up and i would ask them questions and you know mm-hmm. i have all girls i have three girls my youngest okay. is 23. My oldest is just turned 33. Mm-hmm. So, wow. um, yeah, and I have a 29-year-old um, um, middle okay. child. So it's okay. like having a conversation, like I said, I had all girls. So it was like, you just think about getting pregnant and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. And, you know, yeah. a lot of these girls, they get pregnant, they don't finish school. So you got all that going through your head. You know, um, all my children, like I said, they, they're grown and none of them have children. They all, um, you know, doing very well and, right. you know, very respectful um, young ladies. So mm-hmm. um, thank God. It's all God. Yeah. It's all God. Rip, you yep. know, this far. But having them conversations about sex and having the conversations yeah. about drugs and things like that. The only thing that um, I ever experienced with them when it came to drugs, my middle child has MS. So she okay. started smoking marijuana because she made it made her feel good. And okay. it made me feel some kind of way as a, a mother, because I'm like, I don't want my daughter doing that. 
Right. But when we had a conversation, because that's one thing, I always have co- open conversations with them. And I try to put myself in their um, their shoes. You right. know, I grew up in a generation where children need to be um, seen and not heard. Yes. You know, if I give you that look, <laughs> that go, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. I better not tell you twice. You better not smack your lips. You better not roll your eyes. You better not do none of that. You know, yes. um, <laughs> I kind of rule old school, but also I tried to, I had to realize like at a certain age, I wanted to be heard. You know, I wanted right. to express myself and I couldn't because we had these rules. And so I kind of like in, implement my rules with how I was raised. And um, so we would, when they got to a certain age, we had certain conversations. So when right. I, you know, when I realized that that's what my daughter was doing and she was like, well, mom, you know, it makes me feel good because taking this medication, my middle child is like me. She does not like taking no medication. She would suffer first before she take medication. And she was like, it makes me get through my day. So I had to get used to that. You know, I had to get used to um, her smelling like that weed. That stuff irritates me, but I had to get used to that. Now, you know, she doesn't even do it now. So she was really using it because she was in pain. So, um, I mean, and and I guess in that sense, I mean, it's, it's, She's used it and that kind you can kind of justify it because it's she's using it as a medication mm-hmm. at that point. Um, but uh, she's not doing it because you need to get away or you know in your mind. It's not a nice it's not a psychological thing. Like she was doing it for actual physical pain, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I could yep. see I mean, yeah, and those that's medical what it, marijuana cards are ridiculously high. Yep. <laughs> for no reason. She didn't, have, she didn't have one of them. Right. Okay. Back then. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and she had the weed man on speed dial. Right. <laughs> it was marijuana, but she didn't have the card. <laughs> How much are they? Oh, at least $145. Oh, wow. Damn. Wow. Least, yeah. Just for a card. <laughs> Damn, you got to yeah. add that to your Christmas. Wait, list. wait, yeah. wait. And okay. they don't take insurance. Oh, Damn. wow. Damn. You got to pay the full amount. All right. A hundred and forty dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's when you mm-hmm. got your OnlyFans um, page. You got yep. your OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> money. I'd be look. I would get one, and I would be charging people thirty dollars to watch me read Bible scriptures. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <bad. laughs> then yep. keep on, and I'd be like, please turn to Psalm. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> What'd be funny is if you do it and you're naked when you're doing it. Be, oh, my God. Oh, okay. It's just it's so, wrong. That, be so wrong. that would be so wrong. That would be so wrong. I mean, God did make nudity, so. Yeah, exactly. Yes, right. Right. <laughs> I'm going to read the scripture the way Eve would have read it. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. They pay for what they pay for. They don't know what, you don't know what you pay for on OnlyFans. Right, right, right. I heard Chris Brown is on OnlyFans. Huh? Who? I heard Chris Brown. Oh, Chris yeah. Chris Brown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was on. He be playing that, dancing? I don't know I what don't he's know. doing. Hope he's but... dancing with clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I heard no, he's on there. No woman ain't going to want to watch him dance with no clothes on. So, no. Ain't nobody it, we, we always it's associate do other stuff. I think we always <laughs> associate OnlyFans with with nudity and porn and stuff like that. But um, because he paints. I don't know. I guess he, he, could, he, he might paint. Right, Doesn't right. he paint? Yeah, he does. He's an he artist. Does. That's he paints. Paint. So like yeah. for only and and maybe now with COVID, that might be the only way he can perform. He can show mm-hmm. you know singing yeah. on there, or whatever. A right. lot of people do that. They do right. that. Right. Like we always <laughs> associate it with, that, with 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 porno and stuff like that because the the. You know, I, I said Bible scripture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but people, if you think about it, it's only fans, people say, oh, well, I'm a fan of such and such. Yeah, hey, I'll, I'll pay a subscription to see what's going on in their life today. You know right. what I mean? And people do that. Like so certain celebrities, people would probably pay just to see, you know, what they, if Prince had an only fan, I know one person on here would have definitely pay. <laughs> <laughs> I sure would. Right. I, like Prince, I like Prince because he's an Aries like me. Oh, I'm here. He's, no, he's a Gemini. Huh? He's a Gemini. Ooh. No, somebody told me he was an Aries. Nah, Gemini. You know number one, he's number one fan right man, there. Man. You know <laughs> Look, okay, little Apollonia, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> somebody told me he was an Aries, or did he just die in April? <laughs> oh, my Lord. April. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. So- <laughs> 
Oh, oh Lord. I can I, I can definitely say um I think raising girls are harder. Um mm-hmm. and 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 from my experience, well, my thing with my daughter, I didn't have so you know dads are closer to your to, to your daughters. You know, and like most dads are close to their, their girls. Um I wasn't allowed during her growing up or formative years to spend much time with her because of how the divorce and the visitation was set up. I didn't have a lot of time with her. So when I get, when I got to see her, it was like one time, when I say one time, one vacation through the whole year was the only time I was able to spend time with her. And that was part, part of the summer. Um, mm-hmm. And so that kind of, we, we, you know, we're, be, because of that now she's she's 19 now but because of that we have like this we 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 always button heads um she claims to have a lot of dad issues but um and her daddy issues i don't know i've tried to talk to her about it try to deal with deal with it um but i love her to death i love i love i love my daughter so much she's the only one she's my junior because she's she's also called reagan um and she, she just doesn't she just doesn't understand that 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 how much I love her and I I I, I don't know how else to show her I I mean but she's in a situation now where she suffers with depression stuff like that and you know we've been all kind of working on that and trying to talk to her and she's at that stage where and and I remember being that in at that stage myself where um as a parent, my, you you didn't want to hear nothing your parent had to say. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. So she's kind of at that point where where she's always right. She knows what's going on, blah, 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 blah. But I just, you know, I, 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 I all I could do at this point is just pray that she's safe and she's doing what she's supposed to do. And, um, you know, just and she's also, I would say, bisexual because she's, she goes, you know, back and forth for a while. And I support her each either way. I support her either way. I just want you to be happy at this point. You know well, what I mean? It's it's one of those things. I just want her to be happy. You know, a lot of people like my parents. You know, they'd probably be like, you know, the older generation, like, hey man, what the hell? She liking girls? Well, at least she ain't getting pregnant. You know, <laughs> and that kind of shuts them up for a while. You know, that's how I get them to shut up. My right. thing is, I'm just happy she's happy. If she if that makes her happy and gets her mind you know, that relationship gets her mind away from, you know, all her depression and stuff like that. I'm, I'm good with it, you know, wow. and, and I want her to be open with it. I want her to be, no, I can't come to my dad, you know, because I'm dating a girl or I can't come, you know, I want to be, you could come to me with whoever you date. You know, I want you to come to me any issues. Right. I want you to be able to step to me and say, Hey, cause I'm not judging you. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And that's kind of it. But the, the guy, the boys was easy. I mean, the boys, like my oldest son, he's um, he's 20 right now, going on 21 in January. And he's in the military. He's, he's in the military and he's doing great. Got his own, he's just got his own apartment, just changed into a new car. It, it's I'm, I'm like, he was my baby. And then all of a sudden now he's all grown. You know, it's like, wow. It's just <laughs> some of the conversations we have and it's like, dang, I'm talking to a grown up. What the hell? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, right. It's crazy. So, but I'm grateful. I mean, I'm, and I pray, I pray and thank God every day that they turned out the way they did. My, um, I remember him going to, um, Mervo coming from school one day and got robbed. He got jumped. They took his cell phone, they, you know, beat him up, took his cell phone stuff like that. And it was weird because prior to that, um, he said, I need a new phone. I'm like, um, well, we can't get you a new phone at this point. You know, you, there's nothing wrong with that phone. At, this, at that matter, he was a little upset about the phone. And then I couldn't pick him up from school that day. So he was like, and you got to pick me up from school. So either both of those things I couldn't do. And all of a sudden, that same day, he gets jumped and they took his phone and stuff like that. And part of me was like, I believe you. But the other part was like, did you really get jumped or did somebody or did you do this just to get a new phone and to prove your point you know right. and i felt bad not believing him you know it's crazy i felt really bad not believing him um and 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 i mean yeah it's, it's just one of those things where it, it's it's i just I, I you know baltimore is the way it is 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 so the way it it is because every kid after that that i heard got jumped coming from Mervo <laughs> in kind of the same area. Um, my nephew went to city. One of the ones that's saying he went to city. Hey man, what's up? 
he went to he Thanks. went to city and his first freshman year he's walking home well not walking home he's walking from city going to greenmount and um he got jumped but he got jumped by grown men they they jumped him stomped him wow. on his face and broke his um orbital bone around his eye eye and the whole time he's getting jumped he's basically letting them hey man this is why baltimore can strive because you guys keep doing stuff like this does that make any sense? So he's fussing with him about this stuff and getting jumped in the meantime. So it was crazy. So it's it's one of those things that, that you know, with those kinds of violence, it's kind of scary. You know what I mean? And right. there's a lot of jealousy out there. There's a lot of jealousy. People see, as, as we were talking about before, people see and think you have when you really don't. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And I hate, I hate flossing. I was like, yo, you got to back off of the flossing stuff, right? Sometimes it's good to wear that at um Tom Mc uh, what do you call it Tom McCann stuff Tom McCann yep. <laughs> JC Penny I don't even think is that JC Penny still open I don't know um, yeah it's still open <laughs> I think so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, wait yeah. let me ask y'all a question since y'all said that mm -hmm. going off topic a little bit did y'all family members ever buy you sneakers from like the supermarket you ever went to the supermarket and they had like these big bins of um <laughs> tennis shoes. My, and the grandma was going shopping and they she'd be like, Oh, you need a new pair of sneakers. And they go in the bin and get you the sneakers. And it's like, really? So I gotta wear these right here? Like, I wore the cheapest clothes. My my father would buy me the cheapest stuff all the way till I when I when I got my first job, that's when all the girls in the school started to notice me. Just like, oh my God, you dress so well. Cause yeah, and I'm buying my own clothes now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My father yeah. had me in the worst clothes, the worst haircuts. Oh my God. I was the oh my lord. I was so trapped. <laughs> and now you know what I promised myself, you know, when I was shot for my girls, that I wouldn't do that to them. I when I was like, and, and, mother, and it's the same friend, with me. It's it's yeah, the same it's with like, me. Yeah, they would pick out the worst stuff and I'm like, do I really have to wear this stuff? And I had no right. choice. I get upset with my, my younger boys right now because they did okay, so we're going outside to do stuff in the yard. And he's like, are you really wearing your new sneakers now? Because we're doing yard work. Right. You better take them shoes off. But it's all I got to wear. No, take them suckers right. off, man. You bought that for you to go out in. You know, <laughs> he's wearing all the good clothes at home. Going out and, and then going out in the old, in the old clothes. I'm like, yeah, I don't understand, y'all. But listen, <laughs> so J.C. Penny, somebody made a comment about J.C. Penny. Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> J.C. Penny got the Lolo on Levi. I there think he, like Nick got a bunch of Levi's <laughs> like from that I got from JC over White Marsh and they have like all the sales and I'd be like, all right. Okay. And it's, you know, so it's, they, they, JC Penny does step the game up, but I know about the Benji was talking about. Um, <laughs> so I, I yeah. think, yeah, I, um, they was. <laughs> and then yeah, all of the, um, it was hard. All of the shoes. All of the shoes would be um, connected with the little the little wire, the yeah. Little wire hook, girl. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 yeah, I'm the, yeah. <laughs> that's this that old is, school girl. That's yo, that. is, they don't have it now. They don't even know but, about that stuff, man. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I don't know about that stuff. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan, so do we um we have anybody commenting because my thing is going off over here. Oh yeah, yeah. I got a couple comments. Let me see. I got um Miss Bet I just want to hail up Miss Betran. You're always on there. Thanks for watching. Um Mr. James Cooper. Mr. Cooper mm -hmm. said, okay, tell me <laughs> what the fuck is going on. I just tapped in. Um mm -hmm. Oh, he just kind of made some random comments. He said, let me find out. It's in the reaction on your face. You may need a mirror. Um, the expression of your voices. Oh, I'm just making comments about. It. Oh, and yeah, then he, Pam, my wife Pam jumped on. Phone. My wife Pam jumped on and she said, well, what about Payless? <laughs> <laughs> we forgot Payless shoes. That's right. We used to rock a lot of Payless oh, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, Payless. We didn't forget them. We just didn't want to mention it. Right, right, right. But right. <laughs> <laughs> also traumatized about the tennis shoes in the bin. Like, right. Ms. Betran's on here. She said, LOL. She said, I remember being so excited when I got my first job as a teenager at Roy Rogers because now I could buy whatever. I, wait, hang on. Now yeah. I could buy whatever I wanted. I didn't have to ask for anything anymore. You got yeah. a point. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. And that's pretty much how it was. You couldn't buy any. You, 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 if you left it up to your parents, man, my parents make me wear the worst stuff. I couldn't pick up no girls, nothing. It was, it was a <laughs> that hard, was the man. whole 
That was the whole point. They ain't want you picking up no girls. Hey, man. It's like, dang, I thought I was the girl in the house. <laughs> and, and Bill. You know what was funny? So I remember we had changed school. I had changed schools. I was about, was I about, I want to say I was about 16 or 17 years old. And I had switched high schools. And my father's in there talking to the principal. And we're getting set up for the school and stuff like that. And out of the blue, he goes, oh, yes. And there's a, y- a lot of young ladies that keeps calling the house for him on the mm. phone. And I'm looking at him like, dude, what, what, what you want her to do about it? This is the principal. <laughs> is she supposed to make a public <laughs> service announcement? Do not call him, okay? Right. Not His not father call has an issue with that. I looked at him like, I used to, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> let me, let me I ask you I learned a lot a from my parents' mistakes. <laughs> uh, let me ask y'all a question. It's uh-huh. a little on the dark side, but Go ahead. with technology, how it is, um, you, Reagan, uh-huh. Abby, and Tiara, do you guys ever worry about your kids getting online or just being being approached by pedophiles? Like, yep. All the time. Catfish oh, yeah. stuff. Yep, all the time. All the time. Yeah. I, I worried about it more with my daughter because um, at one point, her only set of friends was the, the clan when she played yeah. video games. And apparently, you know, they had, she's never met these people. They could be grown men. They could be right. young. You don't know who they are. You just know a name yes. on the screen for the video game with Call of Duty or whatever mm-hmm. it was she was playing. And, or, or, or Dungeons and Dragons. You don't know who they are. And then, you, but no. you're on there all day with them mm-hmm. in the headset and they're chatting with each other. Blah, blah, blah. And that's like the norm now. A lot of the kids do this and they're, oh, yeah. they're friends. The with Oculus. These people. Right. The Oculus. Yep. You when can, Nick, you can meet in, real quick. Yep. Yeah, real quick. When he first got the Oculus, we got it for his birthday, which was in September. Right. And me, it's like, I'm always got my ears open. So it's like, right. when we put on the, the headset at first, I could hear other voices. So I was like, are you talking to somebody? He was like, yeah. I said, do me a favor. I said, if anybody, I said, because adults say, no, this is for kids. Mm-hmm. And Oculus is made by Facebook. So anybody can get on it. Yep. yep. I said, if anyone says anything inappropriate to you, ask for an address information i said you say bare minimum and if they keep pressing the issue you say i don't give that information away exactly. not that oh i can't exactly. or no because that seems like oh you're sc-. no let them know i'm not for the shit mm-hmm. i'm not mm-hmm. giving you my information and these forums mm-hmm. even roblox sometimes i have to like what because adults are constantly trying to target children right. by either posing as children or in that age group and will be like, oh yeah, no, I'm your friend, I'm okay. No, you're not. You're trying to target these children that are innocent and don't know any better. Right, right. And so, it, 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 it's it's scary because I, I, as I said, like when my daughter, my daughter came, she was 18 at the time and she said, dad, I need to go to New York. Um, why you need to go to New York? Because um, I got um, a couple of my clan buddies hanging up there and we're all gonna hang out together and stuff like that. And I'm like, uh, these people could be like 30 something years old, 40 something years old. You're 18. I don't think it's a good idea. And that year we never sent her. Um, it, but it, it's one of those things where I had to, de- I had a battle with the mother because the mother was like, well, you're grown. You can do what you want to do. And so now I was like, I'm, I'm not even getting the mom support on this. So <laughs> I, here I I'm looking like a bad guy. All right. I see Tiara, your face down there. What's going through your mind? So um, when um, he first talked about his daughter, um, it took me to a place that I'm a fall. I was a part-time dad, daughter, you know, right. Right. Um, my parents split up when I was very young. I think mm-hmm. they, I think I was like maybe two. Or, right. And that's exactly how old my daughter was when we split. Yeah. So when I heard it, I was just, my wheels were turning and, um, it, you know, it sounds like she's just looking for love and you have, I know for sure my dad died when I was 15. Right. So I don't have, I didn't have an opportunity to try to, we mended fences and we forgave each other Mm -hmm. because he came back into my life when I was nine. Right. Fully. So, you know, that space apart, it was like he, him and my mom spoiled me. So when y'all said the stuff about the tiny shoes and I, no, no, you know, I don't, I don't know any of that stuff. All I know is designer, you know, designer stuff because he was trying to make up. And so was my mother. Yep. So like, you know, so that, that, that's where the brand came from. 
Yeah. Ah! <laughs> no, the brand came from right, right, right. him being a drug dealer and my mom <laughs> being a nine to five hustler. So, you know, uh, right. I was it, I was always going to be a hustler no matter what. No matter what, right. No matter what, you know. So, but um, I know she has a lot of questions and I know you do too, but I definitely think that you shouldn't bombard her with questions. Mm-hmm. You, should, you should just focus on her interests. You and that and that's what I've been doing. I like I don't I don't really add you know have too. <laughs> I don't ask a lot of the questions. I just try to understand where she's at at this point. And yeah. basically, I I try to shoot her a text or, or something every day because the other thing is she doesn't live here in Baltimore, so it it, it makes it even harder. She's in Georgia, so okay. I have to send her you know something on social media that say hey I love you, I'm thinking about you, stuff like that. And I have to do that. I do that every day, every day, every day. You know. Because she came up to, that when I, I said she's beautiful because she walked up to my yep, table. Yep, yep, yep. She was, she was there. For, I, remember, I forgot. She was there for the, um, the what you yeah, call it. Yeah, and she was just talking to me, and I just felt she's so, the way she speaks, mm-hmm, speaks mm-hmm. so well. Yep. And, and she started a conversation. And but, that was the other thing we used to worry about because she yeah. was, growing up, she was more developed than her mm-hmm. age, body-wise. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. she would go and she was extra friendly. So she'd go to people and be like, I'd be like, Lily, come on now. You can't just hug everybody. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not appropriate. Yeah. You can't I'm hug everybody. Like, so these mm-hmm. are my everybody you meet going to be a good buddy, your friend. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I, so. I met all three of them. She introduced them mm-hmm. and we talked and she was like, I'm just excited to be here. And I was yep, like, yep. Oh, her. you know, <laughs> but um, I think that that comes from just, uh, urge to be loved mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. accepted, not validated, right. but accepted. And and I think what 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 she's she's at that point. I don't know. I don't know what type of love she's looking for, but she's at the point where she's not realizing that there is love there. It is everybody in the family she loves her, and that. they worry about her, and she's just not noticing okay. that it's there. You know, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't notice it up until after I had my daughter. Right. And, and and I just told my I told somebody that just a couple of days ago, I said, it's not until yeah. you have your own kids, then you realize what your parents went yeah. through and you appreciate your parents a lot more. Yeah. So yeah. don't rush her. It's no, I'm, like, not, I'm, I'm not because I, I kind of understand. I just pray for it. That's about it. That's all I can do is pray. It's and like a whole contact. Right. You're trying to feel it. That's all. Yeah. Right. So if you just fill it with love. That's all you mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And love. that's what I keep. I'm trying to just flood it. That's all. I, I just keep flooding it with with. with, with. Mm-hmm. That's I it. love you. Yeah, I'm here. If you need me, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, but from my experience, I just want you to know it's nothing that you did wrong. And it's nothing that she did wrong. Right. So, it'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. It's coming. And she's blessed because you're still here. You know, right. when I was 15, right. that's the middle of needing a father. Exactly. As a, as a little girl. Right. So, and I should, I'm sure there's so much you wish you could tell him, so much you wish you could show yeah. him at this point yeah right. yeah so yeah i say he's looking down he's very proud <laughs> you got the brand the j uh, brand <laughs> he's so very proud <laughs> yeah but i would i would have to say that i think it's great um reagan that you are still in your daughter's life that way mm-hmm. because like me and my father are close now right but, right um i would have to say that when i was younger um we didn't have the best relationship and I'll be transparent and say that that fucked me up mentally. And I had a lot of I had a lot of father issues. So when I dealt with men when I was younger, it it, it somehow it, seeped into it. I did a lot of jacked up mess. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like right. I just was like because I was looking for something to fill that hole with right. my dad. You know right. what I mean? Right. So. You know, when they say daddy issues, it means like, you know, you're looking for that love or validation Mm -hmm. to come Mm -hmm. from dad, but it's not. So you're like, well, let me try to find it from the male population any way, shape or form. And that's not always the healthiest, but like I said, the older I got. And I think that, and and that's what I worry about. That's what I'm worried, right. Yeah. So like you said, as long as she still comes to you and even her sexual preference, like she Mm -hmm. said, she's 19. She's 19, right? Right. right. Yeah, she is. Yeah. I was so really coming. It's like, you know, <laughs> so it's um, even though like she's almost, you know, she's basically grown, she still at least has you now to, you know, because you can't. Once someone becomes a certain age, everybody 
basically can do what they want to do. They're grown. So, mm -hmm. you know, as long as you're there for her and you accept her and she knows it, that's going to be way more helpful than you'll probably ever realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think did, it's awesome that you I did that too with relationships. I yeah. like it in anger and in arguments. I didn't see the boyfriend. I saw my right. father. So I was like, right. ah, you know, I saw him. Mm -hmm. So I can relate to that too. Right. right. I definitely sabotaged some stuff in my life. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was still yeah. angry. Yeah. Well, I didn't do none of that because I was a perfect person. Oh, uh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I've had daddy issues and men problems. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, even talking about that, like girls having daddy issues. It was crazy because I my father was in my um life and so he passed away three years three or four years ago, and her, my mother and father stayed together until my mother passed away in ninety nine. Right. But right. even in that, you still have um we still had mother daughter I mean father daughter um issues. Right. Um, I was like a daddy's girl, right. but my father was not a perfect person, and he did things. And the older I got, I seen it. So it was like um. It, the love turned to hate right. and I, I hated him and disliked him for a very long time but um, after I got into my religion I'm going to tell you the truth like getting into a religion and, and learning yourself first mm -hmm. loving and love yourself first um, it made me look at my parents both of them differently right. you know you have to realize that your parents are human and they are people as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make mistakes. But when you're a child, you don't understand that. It didn't take no. me until adult until I got into my religion to really, really understand fully, like how to really deal with my parents. Right. And, and, um, and, and, and then my realize father, where, they, where they got their experiences from was from their parents. Exactly. So it kind of goes like exactly. a domino effect. Yeah. And then when I, you know, growing up, my grandmother told me, you know, history. And it's like, yeah, so then you understand, like you said, you understand, like, some things are a pattern in life. Mm -hmm. And some things are generational curses. And if you don't break that cycle, it's going to continue. Right. You know, so um, that's why I said a lot of times, like, when I was raising my girls, I did take the old, but I also brung in the new to have that balance and try mm -hmm. to break certain things because you don't want your children having that them same kind of issues. So when they go out here and, and, and try to find guys for sexual pleasures or to fill that void and that hole and all that, you know, um, thing for me is because of, once again, I'm going to go back to the religion part of it, because um, I always was chasing God no, no matter what, whether right. it was um, in Christianity, um, being a Jehovah Witness. I mean, I've been through it all until, you know, I found what, what would call for me, and that was Islam. But um, it just changed my life. And by that change in my life and the teachings teaching me who I am as a woman, as a black woman, period, it made me look at my parents totally different and my respect for them totally different. So before my father um, passed away, you know, um, we had that friendship again. We had that, that friendship again, and I was um, very happy with that. You know that we was able to be able to be friends before he left this earth for good. So, oh, that's awesome. yeah. yeah, and that's we awesome. gotta as as people we have to realize that. You know, we we we. I know that um, children are hard on their parents because we mm -hmm. want them to be perfect. We want them to be Superman and Superwoman. Right. We don't. Yeah. Them, right. They have their own issues, their own stuff, and we don't know how you know they was raised. I have a friend that um has a, a issue with a parent and my advice to that person was do you know how that person was raised you know what was they going through because sometimes what they go through it trickles down onto their children it really mm -hmm. did and as adults as we get older we have to learn how to come out come out of that because we right. can live in that forever and, right. and always keep blaming our parents for our behavior and it's like, but right. after a certain age, you got to start taking responsibility and you got to forgive them. Mm -hmm. yep. You got to forgive them and love them and, and move on. Mm -hmm. But some people don't want to do that. They want to live. And yeah. this is what my parents did. This is what my parents did. My, my parents don't love me. My parents, this, that, that, and the other. And, and, and so, you know, I, I was a police officer for 10 years um, in Virgin Islands. And I swear, when, when, when I grew up 
I, I got beat with almost everything in the house. My father would whoop my ass for stuff that, that he thought I was going to do, or just in case you're going to do it, you got that just in case ass whooping. Oh, God, yeah. I got hit with all kinds of stuff. I got hit with the iron. I got hit with all kinds of crazy stuff. There's a one, one time I'm standing there washing dishes and um, just washing the dishes. My father comes in, he was drunk, and all of a sudden he takes this empty can, like a, you know, like a, it was a big can. And I turned around and he smashes it into my face. You know, my glasses got stuck in it. And I was like, what in the world? My mother went off, like, why'd you hit him in the face? Da, da, da. And she's going off. They start fighting and stuff like that. So, grow, you know, when I, when I became a cop and people say, well, I abused my kids because that's how I was, because I was abused as a child. Look, man, I was abused as a child. And that don't make me beat my child. That don't make me go off. Right. Now, I don't, maybe I don't understand it, but at the same time, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. Mm-hmm. Instead, I'm the opposite. You know, I'm I'm the opposite. My father never hugged us. He never, you know, put his arm around us and stuff like that till we were like, I, I remember 18 years old, I'm leaving Trinidad and Tobago and I was leaving Trinidad because I was done with school, all that stuff. So I'm going, you know, flying up to the States with my grandmother and I'm, I'm in my head. I'm like, yes, I'm done. I'm finally, I'm, I'm, I'm away from dad. You know, he's in the airport. I'm going through the gate and he calls me back. And I'm like, okay. So I, I walk back, you know, it's like, is that, hey. And as soon as I walked up to him, he says, um, you make sure you be safe. I love you. And then he hugged me. And at, I swear, 18 years old, I melted like a baby. I was in tears. I couldn't leave the airport. It was like, I've never in my whole life heard this man say, I love you. This was the wow. first I've ever heard my father tell me he loved me. And it was wow. the whole plane ride to the States. I just wanted to run back home and my eyes were teary eyed the whole way. And I was like, I, I'm, I'm like, yo, man up, man. You got to stop crying. I couldn't. It was like, it, it, it took, it was so much pent, 18 years of pent up emotion just came up mm-hmm. all at once. And they had to drag me through the gate to go onto the plane and shit <laughs> like that. It was crazy. Cause it's like, and, and I didn't, I wasn't understanding what was going on with me. And I was like, man, this is crazy. But um, it, it's one of those things where I learned from his mistakes. I learned from my, my kids now. I hug them all the time. Tell them I love them. Oh, yeah. Out of the blue. You know, you, we, I, I make sure I, I, I try to hug each one of them, give them kisses, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because I never had it. And I knew that's what I wanted. So I want to make mm-hmm. sure that they don't ever have to want that. Right. I and, remember my and, mother being very affectionate with me. And so I'm very touchy-feely, huggy, right, kissy with my right. kids. Because, and I've had, I remember Jay being like in middle school and I'd be like, you know, hugged up on her. They'd be like, looking at her like, your mother does that? And she'd be like, yeah, that's normal. Yeah. And it's like, no, my mom don't, don't do that. And it's just right. like, parents, children need their parents. They, they need that affection. Right. And affection. And that can make a world of difference instead of you being cold or hard on them all the time. You know, and if you put up a wall, the kids are going to grow up with a wall, which is going to mm-hmm. make their relationships mm-hmm. all crazy as well. So, but, it's, and, and I it's remember awesome. you saying, remember, I remember, I think was it you who said that, that, that you like you hated your parent, you hated your father or something. I didn't, I didn't hate him. It's just that he, when he would say, "Don't do this," right, and I would say, "Well, Dad, why?" Not because I was being disrespectful, but like right. I'm, I'm a kid, I'm curious right, right. because I said so. So right. when he would do that, because I said so, as opposed to my mother, I'd be like, well, don't do this, Nicole. You know, don't do this. Well, mom, why? Well, because of A, B, and C. And I'd be like, oh, mom makes sense. But my dad being like, because I said so, I would be rebellious toward him. Right. So I would right. dig my heels like, well, I'm not listening to you because, you know, mom makes better sense. You know, so it's just kind of like right. everybody, right. I guess, parenting yeah. methods are different. But sometimes, you know, it's okay to explain things to your children. Mm-hmm. not because. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're being disrespectful or because right. like, well, you ain't a kid. I ain't explaining shit to you. No. Right. Sometimes a kid has to understand, well, why are you saying this? Yeah, it's I like as so. adults, if we're at work and the boss says, well, I want you to do this. Because well, I'm your mother and I said so. I'm your father and I said so. Yeah. But well, can you explain why? All right. <laughs> you and that's older. the thing. You kids get older. They're not effective communicators. They don't yeah. know how to fully communicate yeah. what, they, what it is yeah. they want to tell you. And they and it was so weird that my, my my dad, even though he was like that, I love him to death now. We tell each other I love you every day when we talk on the phone. Every time we talk on the phone, I, you know, we, we, we deal with it. Our relationship now is so different. 
Um, but I hated him for, for most of my life, my 18 years of my life, man. My sister and I was plotting ways we could take him out, but not that cool dude. I'm okay, that. and then, then that, you know, know that crazy. cool dude I met at the um at your wife thing. He was so cool. Who? Your father. When your father at the store? when when your wife had the um thing in the backyard. Oh my, no, 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 that's Pam's dad. That's no, yeah, that's oh, okay. Pam's dad. That's Pam. so my dad cool. wasn't up here. No. Oh, that's why he was cool then. Yeah. <laughs> that was Pam's dad. Yeah. But um yeah, but 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 he is cool now. If you meet him now, he's really he's really he was it was weird because he was he we we were so jealous as kids because he was so everybody he was everybody's favorite uncle. He was everybody's yeah, hey, your dad is the best. Da, da, da. But yo, he didn't treat us the way he treated y'all. What the hell? <laughs> You know right. what I mean? So he's very good at public relations and stuff like that. But um, he used to give me the best advice when I was when I when I had my my first divorce when I had my first divorce when I had my divorce from my my ex wife, and you know we were going through the things with the kids and 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 her might be telling her telling the kids things about me and and he always told me don't ever say anything bad about your ex wife to these kids. That's their mother. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and I never did. That's that. That was the advice yeah. I got from him. And then he always said, he always said, and so I used to always say, but she, she, you know, she always fills their head with stuff. And he would tell me, look, he said, kids, don't say anything back. He said, explain yourself if they ask you anything, but they don't stay little for long. They're gonna get a mind of their own. And it's exactly mm-hmm. what happened. They yeah. they grew up, and that was it's so true. I mean, that was the best advice he could have ever given me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Because they realized on their own which parent was which and who was, you know, doing what. and Exactly. And they're not going to judge their mother. You know what I mean? And, and I would, ne- they would never hear me say anything. And I would never let them say anything bad about their mothers. Yeah. My, my, my beef with your mother <laughs> is my beef with your mother. That's what I always tell them. Yeah. Right. My whole thing is, as long as you're being a good parent to, to the babies, like with with me and Jay's father, I broke up with her when she, I broke up with him when she was like two and a half years old, going right. on three. And I always said to myself, I would never talk bad about her father because he took care of her he loved Mm -hmm. jay he took care of her like crazy so i'm not gonna bash him now when she got older around 17 18 she was like mom what's the story why you and dad didn't stay together then i told i said do you want me to give you the sugar-coated version or do you want the truth she was like tell me the truth i said okay this is why and then i told her but all those years she never knew why we broke up i said i'm gonna wait till she's grown she has to come to me and say, Mom, what happened? Then I'll give you the truth. And she was like, wow, okay. And then she just says, I don't, I love my dad as a father, but I would never want to be with a man like that. Right. So right. I feel with her right. being damn near grown and her doing it on her own instead of me saying, your father ain't shit. He's terrible. Right. Don't do, you know, I let her come to me. You have to be curious and you got to say what happened and I tell you. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. it's awesome that your father said, don't ever bash. Because I know many parents, they kick the other parent back into the kids. Mm-hmm. They do. They and do. the kids will listen, of course, but you never know how they're really processing it. And when they get older, they may resent you. Exactly. So let them that's ask the, that's you. That's the thing. They resent you. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it backfires. Right. Mm-hmm. As long as the parent is being good to that baby, yep. let that baby enjoy that wonderfulness that that mm-hmm. parent is giving them. What yep. you right. and that parent experience and got nothing to do with that baby that's Leave so true baby out of it. yep yep good advice my mom did that to me too she i would ask her a question like why y'all not together and she was like you know we just not together you know and right. he allowed me to have form my own opinion of my dad and you know the type of person he was because you know your parents are like superheroes to you mm-hmm. so, oh, yeah and once I got a feel of who he truly was at his core, I was like, okay, so now I know how to move accordingly when it comes, you know, to him. Like, I remember one time he told me, you know, um, I was corrupting his other children. And I was like, well, if I'm corrupting your other children, then how about I don't even come around you no more? And then immediately he's like, well, I didn't mean it like that. I was like, no, no, no. You meant what you said, you right. know. I'm I'm corrupting your other children, but remember, I was here before them. And you know, you don't say that to a uh a, a, um a teenager. Right. Right. You know, because I already lost time with you. So when I come back around, now you're saying I'm doing something to your other children as if they are more important than me. Mm-hmm. So 
um, when I had begun dating, I was like, you know, God, if I get pregnant, you know, and I have a family, please, please bring someone in my life that has a great family and that will be a great father for my child. And I have that. I have that. So I'm like, you know, we we are we are close. We are like we're still best friends. You know, we're not together, um, but we are best friends. We talk every day, okay. and I I would joke with him, and I was like, you know what? Maybe we need to write a co-parenting book. And he would laugh, and everybody was like, no, y'all really do. And I and I told him that today. I said, you know what? I was playing at first, but I think we need to write this co-parenting book because some people look at us and say, oh, you guys should get back together. I said, no, you don't understand a relationship as being friends. You can still be friends with, you know, um, your your um, your kids' um, parents. You know, you guys can still work on um, just the relationship because at the end of the day, you guys are still family, mm-hmm. you know, and you still have to share in that you know, the raising of the child. So I say we're probably going to get this co-parenting book cracking. Yep. Well, if y'all get it cracking, let me know the name. I'll get it. Yes, I will. I will. So I will. We, we kind of went a little over our time. So oh, we just okay. want to wrap things up right now because we were trying to stop at 8 o'clock. But um, of course, the conversation always goes great on Good Vibes TV. <laughs> let me um, show you the mask first. So, yes. Yeah, hey, there you go. There's no drip mask. <laughs> The bling is real. Yeah, bling is okay. real. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and, and where can they get it? They can get it on my website, the trjbrand.com. And it's called the Diamond Drip Mask. Um, I am. I have been shipping these out for about two months now. I have sold out um, five times. I, I, this, is, this is a hit. It is right. a hit. Everybody loves yeah, it. Keep, keep, it's keep, definitely keep cute. It flowing. Thank yeah. you. But if you guys want, you can cash out me, um, cash tag the Tierra, T I A R A J, and I can ship it out within 24 to 48 hours for you guys. It is $35. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So you going to shine on New Year's and Christmas. All that your girl. All right. <laughs> well, we just want to thank, we want to thank Tierra for being on. We want to thank Jay for being with us tonight. I mean, we, it was a great topic. It was. Um, uh, it was. Jace is also an excellent bartender. I forgot to mention that earlier. Oh, I mean, man. oh my God. She makes <laughs> have... she used to work at this club called the Tilted Pig. And I swear every time we left, we were tilted leaving the damn <laughs> club. It was crazy. Oh, and I made Pam. Oh my God. Wine. Pam and I Pam and I used to go there for dinner and oh. drink everything. She made chocolate cake and it was clear. And oh my God, I swear the drink tastes just like chocolate cake. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you never need a bartender, she can dust it, you know, dust off, oh, dust off her oh, old books and come <laughs> jump in there anytime. So, Savvy, if you need a bartender today, a, a, a I mixologist. Got going up. I'm going to be hitting up. Yeah. Yep, if you okay, need a mixologist. Okay. <laughs> right. So, with all of that, I just want to say, Savvy, you have anything you want to add real quick before we, we, we head out? No, just um, you know, I'm doing the same old stuff. Doing the same. Ain't nothing changed. Nothing added on. Yep. Show coming out. Still working on that. March um 13th, I think it's yeah, March 13th. Um, like I said, I have a one on one podcast that I do. I'm doing my second episode this Sunday. I'm recording it. Um, it's called um Savvy Entertainment Corner. Um, and I'm still managing a great actor. Want to give a shout out to Lamar Elliott. Keep yep. doing your thing, sir. You know, he just had a movie um that he was just in. And he's doing a, I think, a three city tour. Yep. So I think Baltimore is going to, um, I think they're going to be in um, New Jersey this Thursday. And then it's going to, um, let me get it right. And they're all AMC theaters. Yeah, Atlanta. And then it's going to Oakland, California. Okay. Um, then after that, I don't know where they're going, but after that, I think it's going to be open to all the AMCs. Mm-hmm. Right. And the movie is called oh. Guns and Grams. Y'all, yeah, y'all got to check it out. Guns and Grams. Okay. Yep. Grams. Well, Tiara already seen it. Yeah, yeah. I saw it already. Okay. 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 But yeah, check it out, Guns and Grams. And then he also got some movies on um, yeah, Amazon. I know he had Prime. some other ones on Amazon. You could always check him yeah. out. Lamont Elliott. He's on Lamont it. Yep. I'm still yep. here doing my Trini Spice FM thing. Um, Caribbean music, you download the app. You know, it's free, free, free. Download the app on your Android or your iOS. Um, you can even hit me up on Alexa. This is going to your Alexa skill store. Enable Trini Spice FM and um, free soca music, free Caribbean music. You know, 
that kind of stuff. We play a little bit of American stuff in there because it, it all depends on the DJs, what they want to play. Um, and with that, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank you all for watching us and taking the time and giving us this time of the day. And let's hope these Ravens win tonight. Um, with that right. said, peace, y'all. Good Vibes TV, we out. <laughs>